everybody. We have our special nurse, Lucelle, be with us. And she has been ministering to us all day yesterday. She's from the Philippines. And she loves the Lord. Do you want to uh -huh. say the, something real quick? Hello. Um, it's my pleasure. I feel so blessed and overwhelmed to meet this beautiful couple. Uh, we are sisters in God's eyes. So yes. I'm just blessed to know them yesterday. And now I have a new family. And, and she, I hope to meet you. Yes, and too. she is one of our ministering angels yes. that the Lord uh, sent to us yesterday. Yeah, God is good. Hour. And yes. I'm sending your dad home because, you know, God is here with us since yesterday. Yes, amen. 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 But happy to... Uh, now you and hope to meet you someday. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, take care of your dad okay. and your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Love you. You. So, Thank you. Love you. Love you. Uh, yeah, come anytime, but enjoy. Okay, we will. Thank you. This, Thank you. Show me if it works. But God is here. Yes, yes he is. amen. It's going to be an excellent record for us. Yes, Absolutely. amen. <laughs> so she is just one of the examples of how God has been carrying us through this last few weeks uh, as most of you know by now the, the news we've been receiving have been pretty terrible and dark and uh, sad and the doctors you know mention anything from a couple days to a couple weeks to months who knows but God is the one who knows at the end of the day and uh, so just to update you real quickly uh, we received in the last month or so, we found out that my for two years now, more than two years, my brain tumor has been stable. All the colon stuff has been gone. And we praise God for that, for that extra time. In the beginning, they told us the uh, same thing. Maybe we have a few months or so left. But God blessed us with two plus years of being able to be together as a family and to praise Him and to worship Him and to experience His presence. And then I came for a routine scan over here in, at MD Anderson in Houston, most incredible doctors, um, and they discovered three new lesions, uh, three new tumors in my tube by my brain and another one on my spine. So they did a biopsy on the one on my spine. Um, on Wednesday. On Wednesday. Actually, they removed the whole thing, and they determined that it's actually glioblastoma, which is the original thing in my brain, which is the worst thing we could have, we could have wanted to hear, because it's aggressive. It grew the one in my spine grew within a week, and about it grew about 20 percent. So the prognosis is not good at all. But uh, we got then we got more bad news yesterday morning, early in the morning. And the doctor came in around 5 o'clock and said that my vision is been getting worse. And she'll see I wear a prism thing. My eye doesn't want to track anymore. It doesn't move. So I wear a prism to try and be able to see straight. That's why his eye looks like it's shifted over. Yeah. So I look crazy. This is nothing new to most of you. But, but anyway, <laughs> um, uh, so he came in and he said, yeah, it looks like there's things here are growing in the back of the head. And... It's causing the eye to get worse and, you know, and then right after that, at five o'clock, a sweet lady came in and she came to take my blood. That's all she had to come do. And I was playing that song on my little Bluetooth thing called uh, The Cross Has the Final Word. And she said, I love that song. I have a song I want to play for you. Can you play it over that little system you have? And I said, Sure. And it's this song that's playing in the background. I don't know if y'all can hear it. It's called the Holy Spirit and how His presence invades this place. And we played this song and the presence of God just permeated this room and just came all over us. And listen to this. Every single person that we talked to, worked with, or anything Every single one of them was a visiting angel from God. Every single one of them were Christians. 
And every single one of them encouraged us to keep moving forward. Even the guy that brought down food, he says, I'm not allowed to talk about my faith. I never do this. I don't know why. But I want to just tell you guys Psalm 23. Even though you go through the valley of the shadow of death, he leads us to green pastures. Mm -hmm. He's with us. His presence is so strong. So we cannot be in a better place to know that even though we go through this dark hour, God's presence is real and sweet and comforting. And uh, we just want to share that and say thank you. Yes. And we would just want to thank all of you who have been praying with us, who have been standing with us, praying over Johan and his healing. Uh, we know that God is still in, is still in control. That his hand is still over Johan. Um, we've been through this before. Um, it doesn't make it Maybe any... Maybe you need to speak up a little. I don't know if I can hear you. <laughs> I don't know if it makes it... It doesn't make it any easier um, because it is devastating news. And it. when we first learned it, I mean, it really knocked us because we weren't expecting it. Um, because the original site here and below, he's still clear. Um, but these spots... Oh, this is uh, stable here. Yeah, there's, it's stable. And everything else down there is gone. And so it's just these three spots that showed up out of nowhere um, that really just took us took us uh, for a spin. Yeah, it was tough. Every time I think of, I look at Stephanie or I look at the kids or think of the kids, my heart just breaks. And we, I mean, we've been weeping and weeping and weeping. Mm -hmm. But you know, sorrow may come in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes. And when we were at our lowest point. The Lord sent these ministering angels and ministered to us and lifted us up. And so... And your prayers have been held Oh, up my goodness. As well. And we thank you for the encouraging messages and the phone calls and the text messages and all of those things. Um, you've been pouring into us. Um, and we really and our family. And our friends have been taking care of our kids. Uh, or everybody, the body of Christ. Let me tell you something about the body of Christ. There's nothing greater than the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. We have been carried on the hands of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. They have been with us. You have supported us. You have carried us. And I know you're going to continue. We couldn't do that without our brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm -hmm. And we thank you so much for everything that you have done in carrying us and helping us and praying us and lifting us up. So, we, uh, we face a big challenge, and uh, we prayed about this. We talked to our pastor and close friends and uh, confidence and counselors, and we, we right now we decided to go on two tracks. One track is what we call the faith track. What that means is we're going to continue on in faith. God has done miracle after miracle after miracle, and He will do it again. We have said from the beginning, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego told Nebuchadnezzar, they said, Nebuchadnezzar, we will not bow down to you. Mm -hmm. We'll only bow down to your true God. God is able to save us. He will save us. But even if he doesn't, and that is acknowledging his sovereignty, we will not stop praising you, praising the only one true God. We will not bow down to you. That's what we're going to do. We're going to continue to praise him. He's able to heal me. He will do it, but even if he doesn't, because he's sovereign, and we need to ex respect his sovereignty, we will not stop praising him. I will praise him until my last breath on this earth, and I'll praise him with my first breath in heaven for eternity. And our kids and Stephanie will praise him here every day. And we're going to stand on that promise. Even if he decides to take me home, we will rejoice. We will praise Him because He's a good, good God. You cannot deny His presence yeah. and you cannot deny His goodness. Yeah. So that's the one track we're going to take. We're going to continue to believe, continue to move forward. We're not laying down. We're going to fight. You know, some of you know I can fight. I always say I'm a really nice guy and tell you me reason not to be. But <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, we're going to continue to fight. The second track, we're gonna, we call it the Wisdom Track. And uh, tell, tell them a little bit about, expand what that means. 
So, and do speak up, pra practically, <laughs> um, the second track that we're really going to take um, is because of what we've been going through the last two years, um, we're going to, financially has become uh, pretty heavy. And since it's just me um, right now, what our plan is right now tentatively is to go ahead and move out of our home um, and move in with my mom for a couple years. Um, and that will allow and rent out, lease out our property. And that will allow me to be able to pay down my debt that I've acquired over the past couple years. Um, and then once that debt is paid off, um, then we can move back. We can come home. And I would not be surprised if we all move back at that time. That's what we're building. My credit card debt has been, all, every, all our stuff has been maxed out because this has been so financially a mess. But I'm going to try and restructure mine, try and deal with the credit card company, see if they can have mercy somehow. But we're going to protect Stephanie's credit so that she will not get stuck in a financial mess. And we know without a shadow of a doubt that this six acres of peaceful land that God gave us in Alito, Texas, He gave it to us. He gave that as an inheritance that I can pass on to Stephanie and the kids. And we know that. And we're going to make sure that that they will be able to move back if the Lord decides in His wisdom to take me home earlier. So that's the practical steps we're going to take. If you guys can pray for us, it's going to be a rough couple of weeks. But we're going to hustle. We're going to make this work and make sure that they have their place of inheritance to go back to where the Lord will continue to minister through our family there. Another thing I want to ask you to pray for... Um, Stephanie has always wanted to have a little art studio. And uh, that's one of the things I want to give her. Um, I already asked some people to help me think about it. What we're going to do is I'm going to see if we can build one at Grandma's house that we can that's mobile, that one when the day comes and she moves back, she can go set it up there on that peaceful six acres of land and experience the beautiful sunsets and sunrises in that place and do the art that she's always had in her in her heart. And a lot of you don't know that, but she's very artistic. Uh, I'm no Rembrandt. <laughs> no, no, well, no, if anybody's Rembrandt, it's me. But, but anyway, we're going to stop talking and stop boring you. But we just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for praying for us. Thank you for believing with us. Our brothers and sisters in Christ, and even those people who do not know Jesus. We've had people who do not even know Jesus. We shared, we shared Jesus just now with a guy that did our physical therapy. We told him, he asked, how is it possible? How do we stay together and marriage with through all this? And we told him one thing. He says, the glue is God. Yeah. Stephanie and I would have been divorced 550 million times if it weren't for the fact that we love God more than each other. Yeah. Because when we want to fight and we want to go different ways in stubbornness, the fear of God is that holds us together and the love of God. Say, no, we're not going to do that. We're a covenant with the Lord. And through that, through persevering, we've come closer and closer and closer. And we prayed for him. And I said to him, young man, his name is Martin. I said, young man, I'm going to pray. And we prayed, and we did right now for the Lord to draw him close to himself so that he will, because he wanted to have a good marriage one day I said that you will know Jesus and that you will love him more than your wife and that he will give you a wife that loves Jesus more than you and that is what's going to sustain your marriage I continue to pray for Johan as uh, now the doctors are going to try to put a game plan together um we're looking at probably radiation again, maybe chemo, maybe switching him to a different immunotherapy. Um, his case is very complicated, um, so they're trying to come together to put together the best plan with the least amount of toxicities um, with the best outcome.
So pray for us as uh, we're getting ready to head a very turbulent, probably, um, and very stressful for the next few weeks, um, probably a month or two, as we kind of get things going. Um, it's not at all what we had planned for our summer. We no. thought we were going to be done with treatment. Right. You know, everything was done because he was clear and we were going to just be able to spend this time just being uh, being done with this whole cancer mess. But, but God is still in the mix. Yes. And we still have our faith and we still have our hope. Yes. He's still in the middle of it all and uh, we are not giving up. No. We'll we praise him when we win and we'll praise him when we lose. Yeah. And my favorite two words remain. But God. but God. We love you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.